Today's video is sponsored by me, Jason Akers. I know a lot of YouTubers and content creators are placing ad breaks in their videos these days in order to make ends meet, and I understand why, but all my videos are created by me, paid for by me. I buy my own cameras, editing software, microphones. I spend hours of time recording and editing the videos for you, my audience. I don't like a lot of self-promotion, but I wanted to take the time to let you know about the ways you can help support the videos and my content. I have a large list of links in every description of every video I provide you with. All of the pesticides I use in my business are listed on my Amazon page. When I started my business, I used Amazon a lot in order to receive my chemicals and equipment the next day delivery. It's a service that I trust, so I list pesticides there for you to find. I also have several affiliate links listed for B&G products and pesticides as well. My course on bed bugs is the number one course on Udemy's website that goes over extensive treatment methods on the control of bed bugs, from automobile treatment to living room and even bedrooms as well. If you have checked all of those links and still wish to support me, I have a PayPal, Patreon, and other ways to donate to the channel in the links on my main page of YouTube, as well as in the description of every one of my videos. As always, the best way to support me at what means the most to me is if you will like this video, if you will share this video with your friends, and if you will subscribe to my channel. That honestly means the most to me, and that's what keeps me going, truly. More than money, more than anything else, is just keeping you guys happy and keeping you with the content that you like to have. Speaking of subscribing, uh, I also have a join button at the top of my YouTube channel as well. This feature is new with YouTube and works in much the same way as a Twitch subscription works. When you hit this button and join the channel, it gives you special features that only joining the channel can give. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you. I look forward to reading your comments in the comment section below, giving me any suggestions you might have for the next video. So don't forget, like and subscribe and on with the show. Let's go ahead and see. Does it work? Yeah, that works. That's I, my, my stuff got all turned off. My computer got re, restarted. All of my settings got screwed up. My but, my computer turned off. It turned off. You did? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, everybody. This is Jason and Charlie with Green Acres Pest Control. How y'all doing tonight? I think I'm going to have Charlie open every episode on my live Streams. Let's see to you like that. So you said, now can you see your face? Your face is all covered up. And do it like this. It would be cool. Let's do it like this. Yeah. How about that? Is that better? Yeah. Now you can see, and your hat won't hit the microphone. Is that better? Does that look good? Are you trying to make yourself look cool? So, I've got some questions that I'm going to ask Charlie. I thought I would try a little question and answer session at the beginning of every one of my live streams um, to see how Charlie would react and uh, to certain questions I get asked on YouTube all the time. And not only YouTube, but Discord. If you're interested in joining the Discord, uh, link is in the description below. And someone might actually post the link here in just a minute anyway because everybody's on Discord. But um, so, Charlie, a question came up tonight on my Discord channel. Uh, let's say you have bed bugs. Do you have bed bugs? No, my bed. Not on your bed? Yeah. If you did, would you spray your sheets that you sleep on and then sleep on them? No. Why? I would take off my blankets and spray the mattress and just wait until it's dry and put my 
blankets back on. Is that how you treat for bed bugs? Yeah. Why don't you want to sleep on sheets that have been sprayed with bug spray? Because it might make you die or something. Might make you die or something? Yeah. Yeah, we don't do that, do we? Mm -hmm. No one wants to die. Dying's not fun, is it? Yeah. What if they put dust, like diatomaceous earth dust, all over their bed? Would you want to sleep in that? No, it might make you cough or die. Might make you cough or die. Or, yeah. or something. Or something, yes. Yes, Teresa. <laughs> Teresa asked if the air conditioning is fixed. It is. Is it better now? Yeah, they had to change the thing to a little one. We had a big one. We had, you know, there's a thing outside that's a box and it has a fan inside, but it's covered up. Okay. And they had to change it? Uh, yeah, to a little one. To a littler one? Yeah. Yeah. It's like frigid down here right now. It's like 66 degrees in my basement. It's really, really cold because we live in a split-level house. And so when the upstairs gets comfortable to where you can sleep up there, the downstairs is like a freezer. So it's pretty cold down here when right the now. Up, when the downstairs, okay, so when the downstairs gets warm, the upstairs gets cold. And when the upstairs gets warm and cozy, the downstairs gets cold. The downstairs gets cold and freezing cold? Yeah, so when... Cozy? When the... Downstairs is warm. The top part is the strike. So, the thing about Crossfire is that it's they're trying to restrict the use of Crossfire in different states of the Union. And I don't think Georgia's one of them, but I know that New York and California and Maryland, from what I understand, might even be passing... Um, restrictions on it too. They're not making it illegal. What they're doing is they're requiring people with a pest control license to be able to purchase it and that regular consumers can't purchase it. That's what they're trying to do. So, Kenju says, I keep my air set at 62. Wow. But wow. keep one room warm for the cat. Yeah. Well, you have sprayed the couch for bed bugs. Because bed bugs do live on a couch. Do bed bugs live on a couch? Yeah. How do you treat do a couch for bed bugs? Spray on it like you do with a bed. Like you do with a bed? Yeah. Do you have to flip it upside down? No. Are you sure? Oh, wait, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You need to go with me on a bed bug job. You have to flip it like this so you can spray the whole entire thing. Is it the whole entire thing? Yeah. Yeah. Vegan Tree Mama is my wife, for those that are, that are curious. We're vegan. We're vegan, yes, we're vegan. Yeah, and we're fully Jewish now. And we're Jewish, yes. Fully Jewish. Fully Jewish. And now we have to eat stuff with a circle U on it. With a circle U on it. Yeah. Yes. So how was your day today, Charlie? Good. Good. What'd you do today? Play with my thing. Play with your thing? What thing? The toy that I got from the doctor. Oh, you went to the doctor? Are you sick? No. I no? Went, I got the most patient scared, the most patient scared toy. If they're good? Yeah. I'm but patient. were you good? I was patient. You were patient. So if you're patient, they give you a toy? Yeah. What does it mean to be patient? It means to Wait and not be annoying. Wait and not be annoying? So yeah. when you go to the doctor, you're a patient? Yeah. Yeah, so you have to wait and not be annoying. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Being conformed asked, they said they've done three full house treatments, um, and they have, have not seen anything anywhere in four weeks except for the recliner. How would you continue to deal with the chair? except the recliner where they originated and dead and dying bugs routinely show up well if they're dead and dying that's right that's what you want you want dead and dying bugs 
so, so I would probably just do another treatment if you're continuing to find dead bugs and it's been four weeks. I would probably just do another treatment. Have you asked Rory if you should treat your bed sheets? Oh, Rory knows not to treat the bed sheets. Charlie, Charlie's the one that I had to ask if he would treat the bed sheets, and the first thing he said was, "No, you would could die or something." So, no, you're not gonna. Honestly, this is this is this is from a four year old. This is a four year old's perspective on whether you should treat your bed sheets or not. More than likely, you won't die from treating your bed sheets, but you could make yourself sick or give yourself hives. If you are you sinking down now? Now you want to sit on my lap? Mm -hmm. All right, you sit on my lap instead of the desk. There we go. The, the desk not, is not that comfortable. The desk is not that comfortable, yeah. but my lap is better. Yeah. Don't put your feet on top of my computer. You'll end up turning it off, and then we will be done with the live stream. You can turn it back on, though. I can turn it back on. No, I can't. No, I can't. If you turn off your live stream, it ends it, and the show is over. And if I turn it back on, it won't be the same show. It'll be a different show. So you can't you can't put your feet on top of the computer down there. You'll turn it off. Okay. Someone said you can die from spraying sheets. It was a question, and I answered it. Yeah, okay. I said no. Yeah. I said the four-year-old answered that you could die from spraying the sheets. That's his fear. So I asked Charlie, I said, would you spray your bed sheets? Why and he I? said, no, because you could die. But truthfully... I, I said you, you, you could die or something, so, so something like... Die or something means like... You like might, get sick. Like you might die or, or something else might happen. Or something else might happen. What, what what is something else? So it means, uh, so like you die or you... <laughs> I mean, no, what is something else? You might get sick or you... Are More you... than likely you will get sick if you go and treat your bed sheets and then lay in them. Yeah. In fact, the labels of pesticides... Are you wanting to sit in your chair over there? Because if you sit in your chair, you're, you're messing up my... You've got to squirm, squirmy. You're squirmy. Um, here, you want to, you want to play Bob Ross? Yeah. Yeah, here, hold Bob Ross. Um, most pesticide labels say, right on the label, if you soak any kind of clothing, sheets, stuff, you're supposed to throw it away. Even your own clothes. If you soak your own clothes, you're supposed to throw them away. You're not supposed to keep them. Um, if you get spray mist on you, like when you're spraying, you just wash your laundry. You should wash it that day. But if you soak it like people do when they treat for bed bugs and stuff, you're supposed to throw that stuff away. You're not supposed to keep that stuff. Uh, interceptors are not something you should be using. Um, they they can prohibit the uh, elimination of the bed bugs. Did you want to get off of here? Did you want to get off? Did you want to go sit over there? Because if you sit over there, you won't be on camera anymore. This is your spot for sitting when you want to wait to answer questions. You can't put your camera right here. I can't put my camera right there. I got to keep it right here. It's right here. If you have what's definitely bed bug bites show up six days apart, is that from getting bit multiple nights or can it be from some bites showing up later and others so you can you can actually have a bed bug bite you and a bite mark not show up for 14 days but um that's not typical you most people it shows up within 24 to 24 hours to three days is usually the the limit you're gonna have to figure out where you want to sit and sit there or you're gonna have to go play a game or something somewhere else do you want to go play a game But your pewter is off. So do you want to play your Switch or something like that? You want to go play that? My, you want to play mine? You can play my, Zelda. My, I can play yours because mine's dead. Okay. Well, you sit here. And Emma, well, can you run up and get my Switch for Charlie? It's in my bedroom. I know how to play Zelda. Okay. Well, you're going to sit right here and you're going to be nice and quiet. You cannot play with sound. 
because there are copyright rules with sound and YouTube, and YouTube does not like you to have any fun. So you're not allowed to have any fun when you're on YouTube. That is a rule. You can't play any copyrighted music. You can't you can't do cool stuff like you can on TikTok. You have to be very boring and very bland. So if you sit here and you play Zelda, you cannot play with music, okay? Deal? Yeah. Deal. Shake on it. All right. Good. I go into the bottom and just Okay, we're going to we're going to I've got to answer questions though cuz I'm doing my live stream, all right? I woke up to a bed bug behind my ear, which made me panic. I assume this is normal after spraying. It happens. Sometimes it happens. Um, bed bugs will wander out. So, is it dead? No, I had to fix it so he wouldn't mess anything up on your game. Okay, me. there you go. Mine. No, that's mine. Hold on. It's my dude. Hold on. Let me fix it for you, Charlie. My dude. All right, it's, it's muted. Don't play no sound now. Um, so I have done some bed bug work before where I have gone in and I've treated homes for bed bugs and people have complained and said that the bed bugs would go kind of crazy and they would start coming out and biting people before they died. I have had people say that in discord where they've treated and they kind of drove the bed bugs crazy and the bed bugs came out and bit them a whole bunch before they actually died off. And they died off and they were gone. This is something that does happen. Bed bugs are not repelled by crossfire. Crossfire, it's completely normal for bed bugs to come out and crawl across the chemical to try to get to you. Um, they will make it to you. Some of them will, some of them won't. Um, all of them should eventually die. It can take anywhere from two hours to maybe a day or so for a bed bug to die after crawling through a residual from crossfire. This is completely normal. So. Is crossfire spray just effective as a concentrate liquid? No. Um, aerosol is not as effective as uh, mixing yourself. It's always better if you can mix yourself, you should mix yourself. I understand that there are people out there that don't have the ability to either store or purchase these kind of spray tanks and stuff like that. And so others may want to buy an aerosol for the convenience, but they do not last as long. You will end up spending more money on aerosols than you will on just a concentrate mixture and sprayed yourself. You didn't an finish answering a question about delayed bed bug bites. Is it possible to be bit just one night, then have the bite show up days later. Yes. Um, specifically in stages, I don't even understand that question. Do you understand that question, Alicia? What does it say? Can you... Name. It's by name. It's above Katie. Please, you didn't finish answering the question about delayed bed bug bites. Is it possible to be bit just one night, then after the bite... Don't show bag your up items, Katie. Later, specifically in stages... So, it can take, what is it, 24 to 48 hours for a bite to even show up? It can right? take up to 14 days for a bite to show up. Yeah. So, so that's a delayed response. You can absolutely have a delayed response from a bed bug bite. It can take right. days now, for a bite to show up. I don't know that would vary depending on the stage of the bed bug. If you have delayed reaction, then it would be probably consistent, wouldn't it? Yeah, they're all consistent. Stage. Yeah, because every stage of bed bug produces the same type of anticoagulant, the same type of um, antiseptic or whatever, not the antiseptic, what is it called when they, when they, the numbing agent, what is that, Alicia? Um, what is that? Bed bugs numb the area that they bite and then they insert a anticoagulant yeah, like a local anesthetic. and local anesthetic, right. And in a, a local anesthetic, they do a, um, an anticoagulant so they can drink your blood. So your blood will freely flow while they're eating you. Uh, which is why a lot of times you will have blood spots on your sheets where you will free bleed for a little bit of time and after they bite you before you clot. Um, uh, everybody's always has to tell me anesthetic every single time. Every single time. That's the one word I can never remember is anesthetic. But that's what bed bugs typically do. And... You can it can take up to several days 
before a bite will actually show up. It does not matter what stage. It doesn't matter if it was a nymph that bit you from instar one all the way through fifth instar. The, any one of the stages, they typically all have the same reaction. It's not like you get bit and it's like, oh, this is a little bite. That must have been a baby. Oh, this is a big bite. That must have been an adult. More than likely, if you've got different size bites, you got different things biting you. So the human body reacts differently to different bug bites or bee stings or spider bites or whatever. You might get bit by a bed bug and react one way, get bit by a mosquito and react a completely different way. So typically, if you get bit by five different stages of bed bugs, they're all the same type of bite because your body reacts that way to that bite. And then if you get bit by a mosquito, it's a bigger bite. So it's different. It's a different size. That's how I react anyway. I mean, I don't react from bed bug bites at all. But if I get bit by a mosquito, I swell up like that. I mean, I, I get like a quarter size. They really swell up. I get horrible itchy spots all over. Um, but like other bugs that bite me like fleas, they get like blood red, little teeny tiny blood red little dots. And they're really itchy and miserable. And ticks, they get like a purple color. And it's just the way I react. So I can usually tell what's bit me by the way I react to the bite. If that makes sense. Going through this now, got a pro dealing with it. He is a lot like you and what you say and how it's handled, except uses Apprehend instead of Crossfire. Apprehend's a good chemical. It's a very good chemical. The only reason I don't use Apprehend, and I explained this in my latest video uh, two days ago, for those that wanted me to do a reaction to Mark Rober's video, I have done it. You probably have already seen it. Um, but let me show you because I, it gets taken down every time I try to do a reaction to it. But let me show you. If you go to YouTube and you go to, let's see. Wait a minute, this is not, hold on a minute. Oh, let's use this one. This will be better. All right, YouTube dot com so two nights ago I did this video I released this video right here why I disagree with Mark Rober's video so if you wanted to see me react to Mark Rober's bed bug video um that's it go watch that I think you should it's a good video so anyway Hmm. Is Alpine the only pesticide to use for outside roach infestation? Now you can use pretty much any pesticide outside for roaches. Um, if it's outside roaches, they're not immune to pesticides anyway. Use anything. Use Demon. Use Bifenthrin. Doesn't matter. Um, do interceptors really work? No, they don't. Interceptors never work. I should do a video on interceptors and how they're garbage. I probably already have. Let's see. Let's see if I have. Uh, search. Interceptor. By the way, if you're here, subscribe. Interceptors work. Myth May, right there. If you hate wearing bras, what? Then you don't want to I do hate wearing bras. I gave up my regular what? bras. And I How'd she know? This video and all content on this channel is performed by a pest no, control No, I don't want that. And it is go always away. recommended to hire a pest control Let's pro in go your about area 30 to seconds perform any in. pest control. Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers again with Green Acres Pest Control with another Myth May episode. Today, we're going to talk about interceptors for bed bugs. Those little cups that they put underneath your bed legs of your bed and the myth is that those things can stop bed bugs from getting to you. That's absolutely not true. If anything, interceptors are a monitoring device, meaning they can tell you which side the bed, whether it's from the bed. See, I can react to my own video. Bed, I won't get copyright strike. Onto the bed based on how those little ridges are made, but bed bugs can absolutely crawl in and out of an interceptor. They do not stop them. From getting in and out of the bed they can absolutely get in and with enough effort while it is harder for them to climb an interceptor they absolutely can just crawl right back up on your bed leg so interceptors do not work to keep bed bugs off of you and if you're buying them for that purpose don't waste your money 
interceptors do not work for bed bug control. Stay tuned for more Myth May episodes. Y'all have a great night, and I'll see you next time. So there you go. See that dude right there? See that dude? That guy right there? He already did a video about interceptors, so why should I waste my time? He's pretty good at it. He's pretty good at explaining it. So, interceptors don't work. Bobby says he gets so tired of bras too. I know, it's awful. It's awful. I just don't get the support like I used to. Since I got old and, you know, everything goes south when you get old. And so I just let everything... Oh what? Should, have I gone too far with that joke? Yeah, you don't All worry right. that anymore. All right. I'll stop talking about it. She likes to keep me in line. I guess. see here. Yeah, I enjoy Discord. Discord's pretty great if I have time to chat. I do chat a lot, but I've been so busy lately with spiders and ants every single time. So, so you know, have you ever noticed every time it rains for like two or three days, you get ants all over the place? Yeah, me too. It just rained, and all I get are calls about ants, and I have been swamped. So, if I have time, I jump in Discord and talk. Sometimes I'll even get into voice chat and talk to people through voice chat. But it's one of those things where uh, if I have the time to do it, I do it. But there's a lot of people in Discord. I think we have over 200 people in Discord now. So, new van strips are very dangerous. Um, they're not good, for one. They don't work very well. They're expensive. And they're harmful to humans, and I don't use them ever. So let me see. I just realized that I don't have um, my phone open because Skype has to update about every two or three days, it feels like. So let me open Skype. If anybody wanted to call in, uh, you're welcome to call the number on the screen. Or text. If you're shy, don't hesitate to text. You can do that too. And I get all of those messages. So, if you're interested. Oh, it looks like I've got some text messages already. Let's see. Hello. I have treated my home, my truck, and my workspace three times with Crossfire, and I still have bed bugs. What am I doing wrong? I don't know. How? <coughs> I don't know. How long have you been treat? I mean, if you treated three times, I mean, how far apart are your treatments? Oh, oh. See, I, the phone's ringing, but the Discord's not working. Let's see if I can get this to work too. Everything got reset. All right. So, I am on the phone with somebody, but I can't hear them, and I'm trying to fix it right now. So, if you can hear me, I can't hear you. I need to fix my speaker. There we go. Can you hear me? Yeah. There we go. Now I can hear you. Sorry, my computer, every single time my computer reboots, I have to reset all my settings. So, anyway, how are you tonight? All right, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Killing for a living. Good. <laughs> I, I just have a question kind of about uh, insects and pests. All right. Uh, I've recently started uh, a flower bed, and I'm curious about whether you would suggest to put down mulch in that bed. Is it? Next to the house, or is it away from the house? It's next to the house. I would not use wood mulch. If you're going to use wood mulch, use cedar or cypress. Uh, cypress is the best option, but I wouldn't use wood at all. I would use stone or something that you know bugs can't live in because the problem is, is that when you go and you put wood mulch down, you'll attract things like termites and stuff like that to your house. And not just termites, yeah, but cockroaches I, and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, that's what I thought. 
Yeah, I always recommend that people never use mulch. I, the mulch guys probably don't like me, but I just, it's, it's, even if it's treated, you know, a lot of times you'll go to these places and they'll say, oh, well, we treat our mulch. Well, it ain't gonna last forever and it's laying on the ground next to your house. And so yeah. it's like eventually that chemical is not going to be in it anymore. And when it's not, the ants will get in it, termites will get in it, spiders, centipedes, millipedes, bite. just everything. Everything lives in mulch. Yeah. I, I the, uh, the builder originally put down mulch and I took it out. Yeah, I would have done that too. I did. I mean, in fact, when I moved here, I mean, I did put some flower beds around front of the house, but I put down that plastic. I put in rubber mulch, but... I would, if I had the choice to do it again, I would have probably put down stone because that rubber mulch, it stinks. When it gets hot, like now in the summer, that stuff smells like tires. It's gross. And so it looks nice. It looks pretty. You know, from the road, it looks just like I've got black wood mulch all around the house. And it looks really nice. But man, when you get up close to the house, it's like, that's rubber. That's disgusting. Yeah. And I, I kind of worried about the, uh, with the stones, I worried about scorpions. Are you Midwest? Uh, I'm in Texas. Yeah, you'll get scorpions. And spiders, too. But it's not as bad. I mean, scorpions, we don't have scorpions in Virginia. They have them out, like I said, out Midwest, Texas, stuff like the desert areas get them worse than, than here in Virginia. We don't get them here. Oh, yeah. I had a goo gob of spiders when I first moved here. I had a uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I started watching you and you your suggestions with the uh, the WSG, I think it yep. is. I started using that and uh, IGR. Okay. And I really got cut, really knocked my uh, my spider and insect uh, population way back. Well, that's. So I good. didn't want to add anything. I didn't want to give them anything new to hide under with that mulch. Uh, that's why I took it out. Well, the mulch adds so like a it. blanket, and it stays warm under it all the time. And bugs just love right. that. And moist, it stays damp. And the bugs love it. Right. So. Yeah. So go with the cedar or, or rock. The I reason I say that it. cypress or cedar is because it's less likely for you to get things like termites and stuff in it. Because they don't... I mean, termites will eat some cedar... They won't eat cypress right. mulch at all, but cypress is a lot harder to find. But um, if I were to do wood mulch, I would do one of those. But depending on the color of the house, I mean, cedar's always that weird, like, orangey, reddish color. And you may not want that down. Yeah. I don't know. It just depends on how it looks. I probably, I still, to this day, would go with stone because everything is going to rot. But stone lasts forever. It don't ever rot. It's gonna, just going to sit there. It's just rocks. So, so what would I treat the the stone with for uh, scorpions then um onslaught fast cap what's that onslaught fast cap it's a M- i think it's an um, mgk product but it's for it's for sc- spiders and scorpions okay and it's really onslaught. really good stuff that's o n s l a u g h t that's it you got it okay yeah, and, fast and, cap, because it's a micro-encapsulated, so you need the fast cap. Not just regular onslaught, but onslaught fast cap specifically. Okay. So I could probably buy that on uh, Do It Yourself? Yeah, you can get it there. Okay. Yep, that's where I bought hey man, it, actually. Thank you so much for the... What, what was that? That's where I bought it. I bought it on Do It Your Own. Do, oh, okay. Do Your Own Pest Control, one of those websites is where I bought it. Oh, Okay. Hey, man, I appreciate you taking my call. I always listen to you, and you guys have a good evening. Enjoy the rest of your show. You do the same thing. Thank you very much. All right. All right. All right, bye. Bye. So have I missed anything, Alicia? Huh? I'm just trying to keep up with everything. It's hard, isn't it? Yep. There's like 30 people in here right now, and I ain't even been here but 37 minutes. Like half hour, and I've already got 30 people in here. It's hard to keep up. Once you get above like, like that 20 viewer mark, it gets very, very difficult to keep up with all the questions. Very difficult. Um, in fact, I've lost all of my text. There, There is a text message. Okay. 
Uh, hello, I've treated my home. Okay, once a month. Okay, so honestly, I don't know. If you've treated, it's possible. So the guy that asked before the phone call came in, I've treated my home, my truck, and my workplace three times with Crossfire, and I still have bed bugs. What am I doing wrong? I don't know. Um, it's it's hard to say. If a person's been treating over and over, are you sure it's bed bugs? Do you, have you found bed bugs? Did you see live bed bugs? Um, have you found dead bed bugs? Have you found fecal matter? You know, have you found anything that would lead you to believe it's bed bugs? Bug bites are not evidence of bed bugs. Bug bites are evidence of bugs, but not necessarily bed bugs. Lots of bugs will bite you, especially right now in the middle of summer. Lots of things will bite you, like mosquitoes, ticks, fleas, ants, uh, spiders. Lots of bugs will bite you, and they may not be bed bugs at all. If you're not finding actual bed bugs, don't assume that's what's biting you. It'll drive you crazy, especially if it's not, and then you're spraying with Crossfire. Crossfire is specifically designed to kill perethroid resistant bed bugs. That's what it's for. And it will not kill some bugs, because some bugs will not die from Crossfire, or not effectively anyway. Like spiders, for example. There are better chemicals out there for spiders than Crossfire. Crossfire is not very effective on spiders. So. It's not storming here, Candy. Is it storming outside? It stormed here yesterday. Candy's in Ohio, Alicia. Is it storming outside? No. We don't really have a storm here. Nah. We're supposed to get some cloudy weather, but no, no storms are supposed to rain tonight. Let's Last see. I, I got change. rid of my bed. I only sleep in a cot. But I treat my entire room twice within three weeks using Tempo SC Ultra. Yet I woke up with three bites on my ankle and feet. Because Tempo's crap. Tempo is not something you treat for bed bugs with. I mean, I, I, I'm pretty sure it is. Let me look it up. Let's look up Tempo. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's see. What is Tempo? So Tempo Ultra. This is a good website. Find labels. Let's go down here and look at the label. Um, okay, so target pests are ants, carpet beetles, flies, cockroaches, crickets, millipedes, pill bugs, silverfish, spiders, Japanese beetles, hornets, yellow jackets, and others. It's got cyfluthrin in it, which is a synthetic perethroid, which is not going to be as effective on bed bugs. Um, if it's all bed bugs you're trying to kill. Demon does kill spiders. Onslaught's better, but Demon does kill spiders. Um, I made a spider video years ago uh, where I talked about Demon and how I use it to kill spiders, but I've changed. I now use uh, Onslaught Fast Cap to kill spiders. Well, it's got a lot of bugs it lists here that Tempo does. Um, yeah, the people we talked to claim Tempo was an end-all cure. Probably trying to sell Tempo. Um, let's see. Do 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 Trying to find bed bugs. Just scroll in the label, trying to find bed bugs. I think I've read this on stream before. Ticks, mosquitoes. Um it doesn't have bed bugs on the label at all. Let's see. Bed bug. It's not even on the label. Tempo isn't even labeled for the control of bed bugs. See how I searched for bed bug on the label? And bed bug, bed isn't even in there. So like if you go bed, this is bed. Okay, so there's one. All right, let's see. Truck beds. All right. Described. So that that's not it. So yeah, 
so it's not even supposed to be used for beds at all or bed bugs at all. Tempo is not for bed bugs, which is why it's not killing your bed bugs. Whoever told you that this was the end all solution for bed bugs, they lied. They just they just lied. But a lot of people lie. I won't lie to you. What is the link to your bed bug course? Let's see. I'll show you where to find it. YouTube.com slash Green Acres PC. Okay? Man, look at that face. That's an awful face right there. Go to this video right here. Solution for this is this is my live stream. All right? If you're on the live right now watching, if you go down, scroll down, and see where it says right, this little gray box right here, just click show more, scroll down, and there it's right. The very first link is my course on eliminating bed bugs right here. Click it. And there it is. Right now it's $15. That's the sale they're running right now. But I am not able... This is all Udemy. So Udemy is the course... That, that it's where it's who hosts my course is Udemy. All right, they allow me to host my course on their website. I don't, I don't control these prices. This is all them. I tell them how much I'd like to get for my course, and then they price it accordingly. They pick the price. I don't get to pick the price. So that's what it is right now. Sometimes it's twelve dollars. Sometimes it's thirteen dollars. Sometimes it's eight dollars. You know, it just depends on the way they do their sales. But this is where my course is on bed bugs. So if you're interested in trying to find it and looking it up. In fact, I can give you the link. I'll just post the link in chat to help anyone that wants to find that. So I had a text come in. Let's read it. I have found blood spots on my mattress. I have seen one. I hired Terminex and paid them $1,700 and they have been to my house eight times, and they said they didn't see any evidence, but I have seen some. Uh, blood spots are not evidence, because, like, I mean, maybe, maybe, but a person can scratch themselves in their sleep and have blood spots. I've done it. You can have a nosebleed and have blood spots. Um, Blood spotting in a bed is something that happens sometimes when you sleep at night. It doesn't always mean that there's bed bugs. But if you've got evidence of bed bugs and you've been treating with Crossfire, um, the problem is you're probably hiring the wrong company. You need to look more localized and try to get somebody more local to come in and do it. It could be you just need a professional to do it. In some cases, it's better to hire a professional. Um, not because I'm a professional, but because some people just do better hiring a professional. I know a lot of people don't like to hear that, but that's the truth. Hi, thanks so much for your help and your channel. It took me five to seven days to figure out that I actually have bed bugs. Now, I'm a week and a half into it, and I got my crossfire. I realized it's not enough for a full house treatment. I could treat an entire house with a half gallon of mixed crossfire. Just, just for reference. I realize it's not enough for a full house treatment. I have DE down because that's what I thought would kill them while I was waiting for the crossfire to arrive. I have a lot of questions. Well, you can ask me as many questions as you want, whoever whoever called or texted. Um, so <clears throat> let me explain to you my audience to everyone well that's oh you're calling right now here we go there you are how are you hello yes hi okay yeah there you are can you hear me yeah can you hear me yes i can okay i was getting a lot of feedback hi i'm bobby Hi. You from Discord. Uh, thanks so much. Yeah. Um, so I moved into this. It's a really old. It's more than 100 years old. A lot of cracks. A lot of, a lot of stuff going on. I had a lot of stuff everywhere. And I brought that from um, a used 
furniture cover that I got. And I didn't know it until five to seven or so. Now, now, like I said, I'm a week and a half or two weeks into it. I've been trying to get to the place where where I could actually spray. I got a sprayer, but I've had this diatomaceous earth down. I've gotten it to where I, I my bed bug my bed is protected. So I've actually finally been able to get sleep and and got rid of the bodily infestation that I have. So I've kept them at bay enough to get my bed sorted. I got the encasements and waterproof pads and everything, but I'm concerned because I've got like 10 foot ceilings and, and the windows themselves are like six feet by three, two and a half, three feet. And so some places I put the diatomaceous earth down. I also have, um, what's the house centipedes, which I've never seen before until I made it here, but I definitely have bed bugs, and then I saw a couple of these. My dog comes in from the yard, so I, I'm just—I don't really know how to treat. I don't know how to spray, but I mean, I'm—I'm—I'm. I'm, I'm, uh, there's so many questions. My head's spinning. <laughs> right. Okay. So I have. Uh, let me give you an. Ex- let me give you an example. When I said that I've used one gallon of Crossfire, so. I mix a gallon at a time. I did a house in Lynchburg that had seven bedrooms and every other room in the house. There was, I think it was like three or four bed bathrooms. There was a kitchen and, of course, a living room. I think there were actually two living rooms, a den and a living room. Um, and all of these rooms were fully furnished. I treated the entire house with three quarters of a gallon. It was the most crossfire I've ever used in one location. But that's how much crossfire it took me to do that house. Um, typically, if you mix one gallon of crossfire, it, it, it says on the label that one gallon is enough to treat um, a, th- a thousand square feet. But you're not treating square feet with crossfire. You're treating linear feet. So you're only doing perimeters and you're treat like so the, the baseboards, um, perhaps the crown, but if it's ten foot ceilings, you probably don't have very many bed bugs near the ceiling. So I wouldn't treat that spot even if I came in your house. I probably wouldn't even treat that spot at all because unless I see bed bugs up there. Now if you look up and you see that there's bed bugs on the ceiling or there's bed bugs in the cracks where the ceiling meets the, the uh the wall. Well, then, now you, then, then you may want to do that. And in fact, if you've used diatomaceous earth, a lot of times you will chase the bed bugs to the ceiling. Um, yeah. But I don't do mattress encasements uh, at all. And the reason I don't do mattress encasements is because a lot of times mattress encasements will shed the chemical and the chemical won't last as long on a mattress encasement. I'm not saying you can't treat a mattress encasement. I know people who have. Personally, I don't do it. And the reason I don't do it is because in a lot of cases they're waterproof. And if they're waterproof and you're using a chemical that's water-based, it will shed off, and then it's not on the bed where it needs to be. Do you, do you, do you see what I'm saying? You there? Oop, I lost you. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. I'm still here. Go ahead. Okay, so... The reason I don't use mattress encasements is because the mattress encasements a lot of times will shed the water and it won't allow for the chemical to properly absorb on the mattress encasement. Do you understand? But if you've got a mattress that is properly, you know, that, that's just upholstered, it's just an upholstered regular mattress, you can treat that. The chemical will, will adhere to that surface better than a mattress encasement. Do you see what I'm saying? I think we have a bad connection. It may be. No, I think my phone. And so if it hears me breathe, then it cuts you out. I'm just going to mute while you're talking. Okay. (laughs) Well, you don't know when I'd say, okay, talk. It'll be like one of those. It'd be like a walkie talkie. (laughs) Um, But yeah. So normally with mattress encasements, the chemical, because they're water-based, 
and mattress encasements a lot of times are somewhat water resistant. When you spray a mattress encasement, the chemical won't last as long. It won't adhere properly to the encasement. So you have to take the encasement off, leave the encasement off, treat your mattress so that the bed bugs can crawl across the mattress and die, and don't put the mattress encasement back on until after you know the bed bugs are dead. I know there's people that will have allergic reactions to things like dust mites and stuff like that. So there's lots of reasons to have a mattress encasement that has nothing to do with bed bugs. But when you're treating a bed for bed bugs, you need to leave the encasement off until the bed bugs are dead. Do you understand? Okay, I think we have a bad connection. I think that's the problem. I had to end the call because it might be my internet because we've had a really bad problem with the internet here. And because it's Skype, a lot of times Skype will uh, have issues connecting while I'm streaming. So let's see if we can try it again. I'm going to try one more time, but it may be my internet connection. No, I don't think it is. I think it's, it's there's a delay and then there's a the pause thing. But um, I got a bit about the encasements. Um, I guess on I also have um, there's the old radiant baseboard heat that's all around the wall, and so I can't really see. And I did put diatomaceous earth there because I was trying to take care of the bed bugs because that's the only information I got. So. I don't know if they're the ceiling or not, but um, I know that I know that I've been sleeping well for three or four nights. I mean, I've seen them and they're around, and I've been killing them, but I've I've pretty much kept them off of me in my bed. So um, I, mean, I know I know part of the procedure what you're saying and doing the bed. And I'm just not sure. Um, do I spray the entire carpet? You're saying, no, I spray the perimeter. Right. Do I cover the carpet? No, you just treat Should the I perimeter. Cover the carpet? You don't have to cover the carpet. Um, okay. What I found, like, in one of my chairs, I've finally been able to, actually, I made the dog sleep in the chair because instead of in the bed with me. And so I, I put baking soda on the little chair and then I covered it with plastic. And then I put like his little rug on top of it, which I had put baking soda on. And I found them coming up to the barrier and getting to the baking soda and the plastic and then they're dead. Okay. But did you treat so the chair that, with crossfire? Oh, I haven't treated anything with crossfire yet. I've been trying to get to the point where I can actually treat okay. getting the baseboards all from moving and everything. So, well, I thought, yeah. I, I, I thought you said you didn't buy enough crossfire though. I thought you said you didn't think you had enough. I didn't think I had enough because I was, I did get it, but I was still trying to say, okay, well, I had to get the house ready. I had to, clean and prepare and get stuff away from the baseboards and stuff kind of organized because it was just a hot mess. And then I was reading the label and it says treat the thousand square feet. And so I would, I wasn't thinking linear, like you said. Right. Well, see, that's where the, the label is very confusing. I actually brought this up to uh, the, the uh, department of agriculture representative back, back in March when I took my uh, re recertification class and I told her, I said, you know, one of the problems with these labels, and not just Crossfire, there's other labels that are this way too, it will say specifically on the label, this much chemical covers this much square feet, but then later on the label it'll say, don't use it as a broadcast application, which means you're not going to use it to cover square feet. You're only going to use it for linear feet. So it can be very confusing reading the label when they're not being very descriptive on, I mean, they are telling you where you could use it and what it'll cover, but you're not supposed to use it on a thousand square feet. You're supposed to only use it on the edges. So the walls, you're not supposed to spray your entire floor. You're only supposed to really target seams of your mattress, the seams around like your cushions of your couches and your lazy boy chairs and stuff like that. Um, 
box springs, uh, you know, the corners, the headboards and stuff where the wood joins together, cracks and crevices and stuff on that. And that's really all. And you're not going to use that much chemical to actually target those areas. You might use a quart. You might use two quarts, but you're not going to use an entire gallon. I mean, I had a guy call me one time, said he used three gallons on his whole house. And I'm just like, how in the world did you use that much pesticide? And he's like, well, I sprayed the whole floor and the walls and everything. And I'm like, holy cow, <laughs> that's way overuse. Because, I mean, if you look at the wall, a bed bug might crawl up the wall. But he came from somewhere. Where did he come from? He came from the crack near the floor. He came from behind a baseboard. He came from maybe a headboard that touches the wall. He didn't come from the wall. And so if you treat the areas the bed bugs are going to live in, the cracks and the crevices and the areas around the room, then the bed bugs will die when they go back to their home where they want to live. Do you see what I'm saying? Even if they're out crawling out to bite you, they have to go back to their home where they're safe. And when they go there, they die. They die. Yeah. And that's it's gotcha. it's more of a common sense way to approach bed bugs because if you treat the area the food is, which is you, and they have to crawl through that area to get to you to bite you, and they have to retreat back through that area to go home, eventually they just die. And they just all die eventually. And so that's that works the best. That's and not just with crossfire. I mean, alpine is also a non-repellent pesticide you can use for bed bugs. Um, uh, apprehend is one that works on bed bugs. Um, there's several. Even tempered is a non-repellent for bed bugs, but you have to apply it like every like week or so. So you have to constantly respray all the time, and most people just don't have time for that. And that's why I recommend stuff like crossfire because it lasts longer. Yeah. Okay. And um, what about my dog? Like, he doesn't seem to be very bothered by the bed bugs. Well, bed bugs aren't naturally attracted to other animals. Now, if you leave the house and the dog is the only option, they might bite the dog. And I mean leave the house for several days. Then the dog might be an option for the bed bugs. But they're not going to naturally be gravitated toward the dog. A dog has a higher, uh, has a higher even body temperature like a core temperature than a human does and so the bed bug knows the difference between a dog and a person and they're going to rather bite you than bite the dog gotcha now if i have an upstairs an upstairs that's unfinished and not being used do i have to worry about treating that area um not really not not i mean you put down a bunch of diatomaceous earth you might have chased them upstairs See, that's the thing. DE runs bed bugs bad. And I have gone in yeah. houses where the bed bugs are living in places they should not be living only because the person wasn't able to get diatomaceous earth in that spot. And so it's just one of those things where you might want to do the upstairs, you know, just hit the baseboards lightly around through the upstairs. If you've got any like leftover or something like that, I probably would. But, I mean, if I came in your house, I'd do the whole house anyway. That's just what I do. If I, if I go and I service a house for bed bugs, I service every house. I service the whole entire house. I even go in basements and stuff, even unfinished basements and things because, I mean, I try to treat everything. I try to be very thorough because if I leave, I don't know if they're going to have somebody come over and bunk in the basement. I don't know what's going to happen because I don't live there. And so I just assume that every room will eventually be somewhere someone will live, and I treat it all. So, Oops, I think I lost you. Yeah, it's a really bad system. I need a better, a better way to talk to people. I might just start opening up Discord and have a voice channel in Discord for people to to talk to me because. It's uh, it's a lot. The the Skype really doesn't work that well, but it's the easiest way to transmit the the sound through the computer, so other people can hear the questions and answers. Because I want to try to help everybody at the same time. I really appreciate it, man. I really do, and that's why I think that's the other reason I was thinking that I would do the base. I mean, the the ceiling, the crown molding. I'm I'm gonna 
try to do all of that because I think that because I did the diatomaceous earth and then, then I'll be able to, you know, cover a little bit better. And with what you said for the coverage, that's really helpful. Do we do the, 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 the cords, like the outlets? How do you do that with the spray? Do you, you spray around it or do you? You just spray you the don't. baseboard underneath. Yeah, I don't, I don't spray. You don't ever spray inside your outlets. Now, if you've got diatomaceous earth and you know how to apply it, you can dust in the outlets with that, but I don't ever spray in the outlets. Okay. Okay. So does the diatomaceous earth kill them, or does it just... It depends. I mean, like if they I've go... Been in houses, kill them? I've been in houses where it wasn't killing them at all. I don't think it's as effective as people like to claim it is. Um, I really don't. I've, I've been in houses that... It was applied correctly, and the bed bugs were still alive. I've been in houses where it was clumped up and piled up, and it looked like somebody had just poured cocaine everywhere, and it did. And that absolutely won't kill anything when it's like that. If it's clumped up and piles of it around, and you can see it, it's absolutely too thick, and it will not kill bed bugs. Because what happens is diatomaceous earth is a uh, it's a shard, and so they 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 crawl across it. It cuts through their exoskeleton, and they basically will dehydrate, and that's how it works. But if if it's piled up, the shards kind of fall upon themselves and, and actually create a smooth surface that the bed bugs can crawl over and not die. And so it's it's very difficult to get it at the exact right metric to where the dust is where it needs to be to actually kill bed bugs. It's very difficult to do it, and that's why I just don't recommend people do it unless they've got training using dust insecticide dust is something that takes a skill to develop you have to develop a skill to be able to use it and be effective and not hurt yourself you know the thing is you got to think about your own health and diatomaceous earth is similar i just did a video that's going to go live tuesday uh, next week about diatomaceous earth and i point out that the, the damage people do to their own house pets like their dogs and their cats because they put this stuff on the dog's fur and the cat's fur and they cause lung problems and stuff. It's not healthy. It's really bad for you. And uh, I really try to help people be healthy, not, you know, hurt themselves. Well, I really appreciate you. Um, I, I will say the tea tree oil is great. I mean, it's like one drop for every one ounce of water. And I put it in a spray bottle. And um, while it can dry your skin out, but it is, I have used it to like spray on my hair, like just when they're, and they die within an hour. Well, tea tree oil. I mean, like when they were. Yeah, that's a pretty miserable stuff though. It make you squint. (laughs) Tea tree oil is strong. (laughs) I've used tea tree oil. It's a good uh, antimicrobial too. Yeah, yeah. But it kills them. It kills them. Well, that's a good little pointer anyway, but I personally, I wouldn't, I just, I just, I hate tea tree oil. <laughs> it's just, I've used it. I've got an actual, I've got a lotion that I use here that's got some in it. And I, it's like, man, you use that tea tree oil. It stinks. <laughs> hey, well, I, I mean, she, the alternative to the bed bugs or the tea tree oil, I'm like, yep. So I actually sprayed it on the exterior of my clothes like a repellent to keep them from jumping on me while I'm cleaning and working in the house or, you know, or. Right, right. So, well, thank you for your call. I really appreciate it. You have a great night. So much. You too. God bless. Uh, What are you typing over there? Jimmy. Yes. I heard. Man, it's like click, clack, click, clack, click, clack, click, clack. Sorry. <laughs> a bed bug bit me while I was watching here. So mean. So, have I got any questions I need to answer? I mentioned to him that we usually recommend three months to 
as a starting point. Um, I got a phone call again. Yes, yes, go ahead and take it. <laughs> Hello, this is Jason with Green Acres Pest Control. Can I help you? Yes, I'm trying to watch your live chat here, and I've been trying to get reach you for several days. Well, you um, got me. What's up? Oh, my God, I got a big situation here, and I'm not real sure on the ins and the outs of things, but um, the first bed bug that I seen was at a hotel, and since then, I'm wondering if maybe I had already picked them up some okay. other place. So I've been traveling a lot, but like the this, the time I've been at home, has not been long enough from what I've read from a egg to go from an egg to an adult. And so that's where I'm struggling at. I freaked out. Um, I went and got an encasement for my mattress. And I'm pretty sure while I was putting that on, because I was doing it by myself, I was struggling getting it on. And I seen what I'm pretty sure was a nymph. And I don't know if from the struggle of getting the encasement on, scraped it off of the mattress. Everything's iffy at this point. Um, so, so I don't know. I got my crossfire in the mail today, and I'm I'm struggling with what to do about the encasement. Half my stuff is still in my vehicle. I'm trying to, you know, get that stuff hot enough. But then I bought a, I ordered a heat bag. That's for luggage. What can you tell me about that? Did I really make a stupid buy? I've <laughs> never heard of those. Um, the you could treat your luggage with Crossfire. You could treat like your your suitcase. You could treat duffels. You can treat stuff like that with it. Um, in fact, I usually do treat my luggage when I go out of town. I typically will treat the um, my suitcases and duffel bags and stuff because I know if I go into a hotel or an Airbnb or somewhere like that, I sit it down on the floor. Uh, there could be eggs, there could be bed bugs and stuff that will crawl on it, and so I just do it just to be preventative. And you only need to treat like once every so many months or so, and it'll last for a long time. Um, but when it Did comes you say seven months, um, how how long ago was it that you went to the hotel? The one where I killed a bug was. Um... Well, it was on the 8th of this month, so it's been just shy of two weeks. Yeah, just two weeks. And so, um, but you, how many bed bugs have you found in your house? I have not find, found an adult one. But about three days after I got home, I woke up one morning. I had a dark blue pillowcase on my pillow, and I woke up, and I'm pretty sure what looked like bed bug eggs was on my pillow. They look like little miniature Tic Tacs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you probably, what happened to you is you probably had adults come with you. And see, this, mm -hmm. th that doesn't happen. Like it, Usually one or two. It's not very common to have more than maybe one or two adults hitchhike with a person. Um, but uh, let me let me give you a scenario. All right, so you go to the hotel room, you're tired, you've been driving, whatever, you take your stuff, you go get you a shower, maybe there's a dirty sock in the floor in the hotel room, you go to sleep. Um, a bed bug smells your sock and crawls up in your sock. You take that stuff, you pack it back in your luggage, you go home. So now you've got a bed bug in your luggage, you brought it home. You unpack your stuff, the bed bug gets loose in the house, now you have a bed bug in your house. Because bed bugs are more likely to be attracted to dirty laundry than clean laundry because the dirty laundry smells like you and they're attracted to the odor of people, the, the odor people give off, the CO2 and stuff like that. And you will have remnants of that in your sock. And so you take it home with you. Now you've got a bed bug in your house. You don't have 20 bed bugs. You just have one or two bed bugs. And that one bed bug that came with you is typically a female because what will happen is there's a they go through very aggressive mating, very aggressive, to the point where if a female is mated with more than three or four times, it can kill her. And so what will happen is she'll get what she needs. She'll get her DNA from the male, what she needs to lay eggs, and then she will go away because she wants to survive. She wants to live. So she goes and she retreats into your laundry. And you take your laundry home. 
and now you've got a pregnant female. Now, she can bite you. She can lay eggs. She can lay eggs up to eight weeks after she's gotten her blood meal. So, you know, you can have a pregnant female that's all ready to lay eggs, and then you get home from your hotel trip, and she goes and lays eggs on your pillow, and you find eggs. Then you will have nymphs, usually within six to ten days. And they typically start to come out and bite after another. So you can have nymphs as much as 12 days after, as, le- as little as 12 days after you bring a pregnant female into your home. So, you know, which would be about now. You'd see little ones, little bitty ones will come out and try to bite you. Do you understand? Yes. Is that what you're seeing? Well, the nymphs, the two nymphs that I have seen, or I'm pretty sure they were nymphs, was um, actually four. The fourth and the fifth day after the hotel boat. And you might have brought some of those home with you too. It's possible. Especially if it was a badly infested room and you just didn't realize it. Because most people don't. Bed bugs are small and they're covert and they can hide and they can sneak around with you. And it is possible that maybe you brought in more than you realize, that you brought more than you realize home. But the way you treat with Crossfire, and just to go, because I know that's what you were, you, you're, you're kind of lost and you want to know what to do. Um, so you take all Yes, your, can I ask you a real quick question, of though? Of course. I had put everything, once I killed the bug in the hotel and I got home, I literally put everything in trash bags either white ones or black ones, and half of my stuff is still in my vehicle. I'm hoping they'll cook in there. I don't even know if that's possible. But some of the stuff that I had to bring in the house was in, they, it was tied up in trash bags. Okay. So is that possible for them to get out of that and get yes. to me? Yeah, they can get okay. out of trash bags. Yeah, they can get out. Um, they, they're real small. They can they can fit past the knot. Even if you tied it in a knot, they can get past the knot in a trash bag. But um, That's what I figured. Most bugs can. You know, I, I always get asked questions like, I don't understand how these bugs can get in the house. And I'm like, because they're little. <laughs> you know, they're just, they're little. They can fit through spots that you, as a person, would look at. And you're like, there's no way they can get through that. But really, they can. Because they're a lot smaller than what we even realize that they can see that we can't that we can't see. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids was a really good movie to kind of put things in perspective on what a bug can see based on what a person sees. But um, I have read so much about these creatures, for lack of a bad word. Yeah. Uh, I have read so much, and it's it just, it's almost, it'll take your sanity if you let it. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people that, that will, will, there's some stories that I kind of, have a hard time believing though, but um, because people get on the internet and they will embellish on the truth a little bit. But uh, what so so what you need to do is I I would take the stuff um I would take your stuff out of the bags and just throw the bags away and uh put your stuff put you you know clean your clothes like you normally would put the stuff away like you normally would as if you don't have bed bugs um treat your home. Okay. Treat your d- d- take your mattress encasement off, and treat your mattress, treat your box spring, headboard, footboard, and bed rails. Treat especially the seams where everything kind of where all of the fabric is sewn together. Those are the places that bed bugs like to kind of hang out, and you need to treat those spots extra heavy uh, when you treat around the outside of your mattress and stuff. You treat your headboard, okay. footboard, your bed rails. Um, if, it, if you see a crack, don't question, spray in it. You know, every crack has a possibility of having bed bugs and eggs. You need to spray every single crack around your bed, around the front of the bed, the headboard and the back of the headboard. Um, a lot of people. I don't even want to go. Yeah, but I just, I just, I'm giving you full on advice on what to do just in case you're underneath the bed, you know, all, all that stuff gets treated really thoroughly. Uh, Lazy Boy recliners, sofas, sofa beds, all that stuff gets treated in the exact same manner. And if you if you target those areas specifically, I've gone into homes, I mean, hoarder homes, where you could hardly shimmy through the house because they just had little footpaths with just stuff everywhere. 
And I just targeted the beds and the places the people were going to spend their time. And the bed bugs all died. And so, you know, because they can't get a blood meal from a box of cereal or a box of baseball cards or, you know, maybe some comic books or some magazines or something that you got nearby. Maybe you read to, to, in, in, at night before you go to bed. Maybe you got a book there that you read. They're, they can't get a blood meal from that. They have to get their blood meal from you. And when they crawl across your mattress, they will die. And they have to because they have to come out to get to you. So if you target these places, even if you don't get, you don't have to pull all your furniture away from the wall and get every single inch of every single baseboard. You do not need to do that. You need to target the places that you live in the house. Like I said, the sofa. If you're going to go sit and watch some TV, maybe watch some news or a movie or something like that, the bed bugs will be there. So you treat those spots because that's where you are. And they'll die. It, it's really effective, and they'll die. They're saving me so much work because I literally moved into a 600-square-foot apartment from a 1,500-square-foot house. So while I'm not a hoarder, I have more stuff in 1,600-square-foot right. than should be. Well, yeah, I understand that. And, and that's and that's honestly, the, I, I get calls from people every day. I've got to go do a house tomorrow up in Charlottesville for bed bugs, And she had called several other exterminators prior to, to me, of course, and she gets quotes, different quotes and stuff. Everybody usually does get quotes for bed bug work because it's expensive. And she's yeah, like, but this guy from this company, he told me I had to take all my clothes out of my dresser and all this stuff. And I said, I mean, if you want me to treat in your dresser, then you need to take the clothes out of your dresser. But the bed bugs can't get a blood meal from a sweater. They're going to have to come out. And when they come out, they'll die. But if you want me to treat your dresser, then yes, you need to take your clothes out of your dresser. Um, but I well, don't have to treat that. Questions. Do what? That was one of my questions because my dresser is about four foot from my bed. Now, I've I treated wondering. dressers. I've done it in, in houses where I did a, a single wide trailer one time where... I, I don't I don't understand how they fit these this stuff in this little bitty room, but they had a king size bed and a uh, dresser. You could hardly even open the drawers of the dresser. I had to flip the mattress up against the wall, and I did. I took the drawers out of the dresser. I found bed bugs living in the dresser. I treated the dresser, but you can't treat people's clothes. You can only treat the furniture, and so I had to just look at the lady and say, "Hey, I'm going to take these clothes out of this dresser because." It's full of bed bugs. And so I have done that. That The last time that house was eight years ago. I haven't done that wow. in a house in eight years. But it's not that often that you find, you know, chest of drawers or dressers that close to the bed. But if it is pretty close, you know, this was within two feet of the footboard. I mean, it was really close. You couldn't get the drawer open without the drawer touching the mattress. So it was like right there. And I, yeah. I mean, in order for me to even get the drawers out, I had to flip the mattress up against the wall. So that in that instance, yes, I treat that bed. But if the mattress, but if the dresser is four or five feet away, I'm not too worried about that as much as I am targeting the bed itself. Okay. So if I was to do the dresser, would it be okay to do just do the outside or is that senseless? Right. Yeah, you could do that. Like, right, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right I know what you're saying. Like, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. like where the where the top of the dresser touches the the sides of the dresser. Uh, those cracks there are good underneath, like underneath the little lip. Do that part. Uh, the legs of the dresser too. If you don't want the bed bugs, if they if you think bed bugs are in your dresser, then you treat around the legs and stuff too. So they have to crawl down over the surface to die. And that that's that's all okay. you would really need to do. Really, you need to target your bed. The bed is the most important. They call them bed bugs for a reason. And so treat the that's, bed because yeah. you're going to sleep there and they're going to come. When you're asleep, that's when you get bit. Right. Okay. I had some picture frames underneath the bed that I've taken out and vacuumed them. Should they be treated? As long as they're not touching the bed frame itself. Then you they don't. Wasn't. They were talking about the bed. Then you. I wouldn't worry about the 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 picture frames under the bed, as long as you're doing okay. an adequate job on the box spring and the mattress itself. When the bed bugs, if there are bed bugs on those things and they crawl up and they crawl across that stuff, they'll die. 
Um, I had a house one time where the lady had all kinds of stuff under the bed. And honestly, some of the stuff was antique stuff that she had had since she was a little girl. This lady was in her 80s, and she had had it since she was a little girl. And I'm like, I'm not moving that stuff because if I move that stuff, I'm liable to break that stuff. And I know I don't have the wallet to pay for that. And so, Mm -hmm. and so I just treated the mattress really good, treated the box spring really good. And I got rid of her bed bugs and I didn't have to move or mess with any of her stuff under her bed at all. How does Crossfire, if needed, work on antique wood? Um, I haven't had any problems yet. What you have to do, and this is what the label recommends, if you've got a spot you're worried it might stain, treat an inconspicuous spot first and just see what happens. Okay. And if it stains, then you're like, ooh, I can't use that anywhere where people can see it and just don't do it. Okay. But it's, it, they claim on the label, right on the label, that it doesn't stain, but wood's a little different. Wood stains sometimes, and so you need to be careful with uh-huh. wood surfaces. Okay. Um, I've also, people have recommended um, using more than one item to kill. What, what's your recommendation? Stick with just the crossfire. Um, oh, you mean like rotating your chemicals? I don't think you need to do that at all. Um, if if I were to use anything other than crossfire, I'd probably use like some alpine dust in wall outlets or something like that. But honestly, I haven't done that in probably six years. It, I haven't had to dust a house for bed bugs in over six years since I switched to crossfire. I just don't have to. It's really good chemical. Okay. Should I check at this point? Should I check electrical outlets? Like I have one above my bed. Should I check that? You can check it and see what you, what you find. Just if you're curious, if there's anything crawled up in there, sometimes they will, but they still but have to. They still have to crawl out anymore. to bite you. They're not going to get a blood meal from your outlet either. Right. Okay. But you can't spray in there. You have to use no, powder. No. Don't spray right? in your outlet. You might cause a fire. <laughs> Water and electricity don't work well at all together. In fact, people have died <laughs> with one when you mix the two. <laughs> I know. And now, I don't want you to hurt carpet, yourself. When you say the perimeter, are you saying that just spray the carpet that's close to the bed frame? Just so so where your where your baseboard comes down on top of your carpet, that's the spot you want to treat. You don't treat out into the room, into the floor, or anything like that. Now, I do make exceptions for like bed legs. So where the bed leg touches the floor, I'll treat that spot. And I'll treat uh, anywhere the bed touches the floor. Those spots are important. And where the quarter round or the baseboard touch the floor. And not just in carpeted rooms, hardwood floor, linoleum, vinyl plank, all that stuff. You need to treat the baseboards in all rooms, not just the bedroom. Because bugs... Even bed bugs, all bugs, like to stay hidden away from view. And if you are a bug out in the open in the middle of the floor, the first place you're going to run to try to be safe is up underneath a quarter round or a baseboard right next to the wall because you could be hidden there. And they, a lot of times I've gone into houses and not found bed bugs on the bed at all. But when I look behind the baseboard, looky there, there's bed bugs hiding there. So they don't always Maybe. hide on the bed. Sometimes they hide away from the bed, down near the floor. Okay. And you don't have to pull back the carpet or anything. You can just no. shoot the stuff. You on just the spray it right there. If you have a sprayer that's got like a pin stream attachment to it, where it's got the pressure enough to actually shoot a straight stream, that's all you need to do. And that will work really well to get down behind the baseboards enough to kill bed bugs. You don't need to soak anything. You just need. It's 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 not about quantity of chemical. It's about the quality of the treatment. Make sure you get the chemical where it needs to go. It doesn't take much, and it'll kill them. Okay. What's your take on putting traps under the they don't work wheels on the bed? That's a waste. They of don't money. work. That's a waste of money, and it would can it can cause problems with crossfire. It won't work. So I should remove those then I before would. I spray with the fire. Absolutely, absolutely. They're just okay. a, they're, honestly they they don't work at all. They just make people feel better, but they don't work. <laughs> yeah, I think that was in, initially. I just was doing everything possible, you know, just to 
I mean, I, if I could just see one bug, I would probably feel There's better. There's so know? many. Right now, I'm not. There are so many scams on the internet because I believe that what it is is people are afraid, and when people are afraid, the salesman will come out of the woodwork, and it doesn't matter if it's real. It doesn't matter if it actually works. What matters is that you give them your money. And they're thieves, really. And so there's so many different things out there and different ways. It be. And, and some people are just mean. They will come up with these horrible ideas that are really intended to hurt you, not help you at all. And then people go and do it, and then they hurt themselves because they try some crazy thing. And I'm really just here trying to give you honest advice that works. I mean, I'm, I own my own pest control company. I've been in business for myself for seven years, and I worked uh, with my dad's company since I was six years old, six, seven years old. So I've been in pest control for 35 years of my life, and I've seen a lot of crazy things that people will do when they have bug problems and they end up hurting themselves because they just don't know any better. And so that's, that's why, why I've been here. wanting to talk to you for several days. Cause it's like, oh, I'm doing everything wrong, like the traps <laughs> and the encasement. And I was waiting on the spray to come. And it was like, last night I got a sprayer at Walmart and I got to take it back and get another one because they, it's crazy. That's a long story we won't even go to. But it's just like, you know, you're just trying to do the best you can and you just, all you got is Google out there, basically, you know? And it's oh, yeah, like, and Google's no. crazy, man. <laughs> yes. So how, like, I won't need to use all this crossfire. So how long will the crossfire, just the chemical itself in the bottle it came in, how long so, will that last? I'm going to say something I've never said on stream before. Um, okay. Crossfire, the label of crossfire, claims that it has to be used within 24 hours of mixing. That's what the label says. Uh -huh. But I'll tell you a story. So I talked to a lady, and this was just within the last few weeks, and she said that she had a gallon of Crossfire that she mixed three years ago. She used that gallon, and she killed her bed bugs. She had like oh, maybe yeah. half a gallon left. She had half a gallon left, and she left it in her garage and forgot about it. Well, uh, about maybe one, two, three months ago, something like that, her sister got bed bugs. Now, this is three years old. This crossfire has been in her garage mixed for three years in the same sprayer. She took that That's jug, crazy. she shook it up, she took it to her sister's house, she sprayed it, and she killed her sister's bed bugs. Now, I'm not advocating for using really, really old chemical that really probably should have been disposed of, but mm -hmm. that's the story I was told. And I don't know if it's true. I don't, but she, I mean, I don't know why she would lie to me. She, she called me to, 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 to thank me for the, you know, the advice I give about, you know, bugs and stuff on online. So I don't know why she would lie. But that's the right. story I was given, and that's kind of a really long time to expect a mixed pesticide to last ever. Because, but it, but if you think about it, if you're if you go to Walmart, how old are some of those premixed pesticides they've got on the shelf? You know, who knows how long they were sitting in a warehouse before they even got shipped to Walmart and sold to somebody else? So maybe there is some truth to this longevity, but the label says 24 hours. So I can only advise whatever the label says, but um, right. that I that's what that's what I was told. So wow. Well, now what if you like? I won't even need to use the whole bottle. Right. Well, I, I can do. I don't have to use the whole bottle, do I? I. So it's every time that I have recommended for people to try to mix a partial gallon. They've not been successful getting rid of their bed bugs. Oh, and so really? if it's the 13-ounce bottle, I tell people to mix a gallon. Just go ahead and plan on mixing the whole thing um, because you won't get the mix wrong. You won't get the ratio wrong because the bottle's already pre-measured for 13 ounces, and so it's going to work. But if you go and try to half it or quarter it, and mix like a quart instead of a half a gallon or a, or a gallon, it's very difficult. It's not that you can't mix it. 
It's that it's very difficult with the type of bottle they give you. They don't want you to mix a partial gallon. They want you to use the whole thing. So, yeah, I mean, I get the gallon jugs, and it's graduated on the side, and you can mix a quart if you want. You don't have to mix a whole gallon. And so it's it's a little more, uh, it's easier to mix some. instead. Like tomorrow, I'm not going to need a whole gallon. I typically only mix a half a gallon when I go to a job. And then if I need to mix more, I can. That way I don't overmix. I always mix fresh the day I do the bed bug job. I don't ever use stale chemical. Mm -hmm. So I'm only going to mix, like tomorrow, like I said, it's a two-bedroom apartment. I probably won't even need a half a gallon. But that's typically how much I mix. Okay. Well, I had bought a, I had bought a measuring cup specifically for, isn't it, six and a half ounces of chemical for a half a gallon? Then? It's six and a half. So, so a half a gallon is 64 ounces. So it's 64 ounces minus six and a half, which is what, 50, 58, 57, 57 and a half. So 57 and a half ounces of water and six and a half ounces of crossfire. Okay. If, it, if, you, if you fill your tank half gallon of water and then you pour six and a half ounces in there, you have already watered down your crossfire. You need to put your six and a half ounces, so you, you, you pour like a quart of water in, you pour your six and a half ounces in, and then you fill it up to the, to the half gallon mark. And then you'll mix a half gallon. And that'll be correct. And you won't have the wrong mixture. But if you if you if you under mix and you use too much water to your to your crossfire, you'll water it down and it won't work as well. Okay, but it's literally it's literally fifty seven ounces of water. Fifty seven and a half. Fifty seven and a half. No, yep. I was gonna make it a little strong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fifty yeah, I mean you, you that's up to you. But fifty seven and a half uh ounces plus six and a half ounces equals sixty four ounces, which is a half gallon. Okay. This is my last I hope question. Yeah. I'm worried I'm worried about my vehicle because I have left my luggage and things in my vehicle right. in hopes of heating to the point of killing anything on my stuff for several days now. And so I the heat really feel in like a vehicle isn't really very effective if the bed bugs can get away from the heat. The problem is, is that there are areas in a vehicle that are cooler than others, especially a trunk. And so the trunk doesn't really get that hot. And so they can retreat into the trunk. Now the, the area that's the hottest is inside the driving compartment because all the windows and the refraction of sunlight makes it really hot in there. And so I have known of people that have killed bed bugs in their car, but if stuff is in trash bags and stuff, that won't work because the bed bugs will actually retreat into the middle of the bag where they've got cool spots and they won't die. Oh, Lord. So I just need to take the bags off and burn the bag? Well, I just take your stuff out of the car, put the stuff in your house like you said, and then treat you can treat your car. But, um, and then treat your house like you normally would and just pretend like you don't have bed bugs. Just pretend like you don't have them. And then, uh, live like a normal person. But treat your house like you have bed bugs, but then Bye. live like a normal person. Okay. Now, what about the encasement that I bought and put on my mattress? Do I need to put that in a hot dryer, or does that even work? I'd put it in a hot dryer and then take it and, and fold it up and put it away until you know your bed bugs are dead. Okay, and then put it. Then it's okay to put it on once you know they're completely once you know they're gone, out yeah. of your house. Exactly, exactly. It's a, it's a way you can protect your mattress from future uh, infestation. And I actually recommend them more for box springs even than mattresses because a box spring is hollow and bed bugs absolutely live in a box spring. It is very common to open up a box spring and find live bed bugs inside a box spring. So Dang. So do you recommend taking that sheer material off of the box spring? I do. I always ask the customer. I'm like, hey, do you mind if I take this off? Because I need to treat this box spring. They're like, most every, every time, I've never had somebody tell me no. And so and so they're like, please do. And I take it off. I fold it up. I put it in a trash bag. I take it out. I throw it in a dumpster on my way out. So. Okay. Okay. Well, your name is Jason. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, I, I think you're a godsend to many people. And I'm so glad that I 
accidentally remembered tonight was when you were on live, and I was like, oh, wait well, a minute. <laughs> I'm glad that you showed up. You helped a lot of people tonight. People were talking in chat about how helpful your phone call was, so I'm really glad that you did call and ask the questions that you did. So. Oh, God, that's great. Well, you have a really I just good need direction. You too, Jason. Thank God you. bless you. All right. So, I'm going to be right back. I have to pee, so I got to do this thing like I do when I go use the bathroom. I'll be right back. Y'all behave yourself. Be, be good. Be good. Behave yourself. Alicia, my, my wife, vegan tree mama, she can answer questions if y'all want questions or anything. Answer. I'm sorry. Sometimes you gotta use the bathroom. Everybody has to do it at some point in their life, right? Yeah. Yeah? Did you have to go to the bathroom too, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah. Charlie's still here. He's sitting here. I had to go poop. Yeah. <laughs> and woke up to Psycho. Oh, all right, Charlie. Did y'all hear what Charlie had to go do? I don't know if y'all heard what Charlie had to go do or not. Let's see. All right. So, I see a lot of questions asked, and even earlier, with um, about cars and heat. Um, Here's a good one for you. Okay. Um, Katie was wondering about a storage unit. Yeah, I was just going to answer yeah, that. Yeah, answer that question. That's a really yeah, good one. Yeah, that's why I was, I was leading into that. So... Storage units don't get that hot. Um, they really don't. They get warm, but they don't get hot. Even in the Midwest, if it was in Death Valley, I really doubt that your storage unit is going to get hot enough to kill bed bugs. The problem is, is that let's let's do a um, let's do a drawing with Jason. All right, I do these like every so often. 
And I'm going to explain to you why uh, storage units don't work to kill bed bugs. So, <clears throat> if you've got, let's say you got a nice, let's see, the storage unit is here. And then you've got like a, let's see, you got a, maybe a dresser over here. You got a, a, a box of stuff here, maybe. And this is what it looks like when you raise your door. Now, you got a whole bunch of stuff in here, okay? But what happens is the heat will radiate down uh, from the sun. The sun's like, we're going to, this is, this is heat, all right? You got to use your imagination, all right? So that steel building is getting nice and warm. So your heat is going to radiate. It's going to be like, let me see, does this have a, a gradient tool? I don't know if it's got it. Probably not. It's just, it's, it's, it's just paint. It's not Photoshop. So anyway, your warmer area is going to be like here, okay? Because this is what the heat is radiating in here, right? It'll get hot in there. It'll be uncomfortable for you. But is it? 130 degrees because really it needs to be over 121 120 degrees 121 degrees 121 degrees Fahrenheit in order to kill bed bugs so I typically go with 130 that will ensure that hopefully here right here is as warm as it is up here which truthfully it won't be heat rises so all the heat that's in this building is going to be here, all right? All the heat is going to be hot up near the ceiling. It's not going to be hot near the floor. And so the bed bugs can get on the floor. They can get in the furniture on the floor. And furniture will, will create insulation. So let's say you've got like a big overstuffed chair in here. So that's, uh, that's right over behind this box, all right? So you got a big overstuffed chair in here. Oh, this is not a very good chair. All right. There's your chair. That's the best chair I got. I think it's a masterpiece. You, you, it obviously would sell for I about. I think that's a chair too. You don't think that's a chair? Yeah. That don't look like a chair. Charlie got to give his two cents. All right. <laughs> this is cushions. All right. Cushions create insulation. So, in this spot right here, bugs, bugs can live in there, inside this cushion, all right? Because that's, that's creating insulation in there, okay? So, no, bed bugs will not die in a storage unit. You would have to have time. time you would have, no, you wouldn't have to have time. The thing is, is the sun's going to go down eventually, and when the sun goes down, the heat goes away, and the no, sun I comes up. time, as in like 18 months, two years, three years, in a storage facility. Oh, yeah, your stuff would have to be stored for like a year and a half. Yeah. If your stuff's stored in a year and a half, the bugs will starve to death. They're not going to heat to death. Heat. <laughs> the, 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 the bugs are not going to heat to death because the sun is only going to heat at maximum maybe what? Four, maybe six hours out of the day. You're going to get the maximum amount of heat and energy causing that building to get hot. But as soon as the sun, sun starts to set, the heat goes away. And, and then it's going to get cold all night long. It's going to get chilly. And it's definitely going to come down below, you know, bed bug death, you know, degree. And so, and then it's got to go back up to the degree in the day. So, no, this uh, heat treatments, I mean, the heat, you would have to have a heater in here all the time, like constantly producing heat all the time. And then you'll end up burning your stuff and you, it's just no good. No, no, you can't, you cannot kill bed bugs in a storage unit. You could spray chemical. You could treat it with crossfire. That would be more successful. But honestly, there's nobody sleeping in the storage unit. There's nothing that's going to drive the bed bugs out. There's no source of CO2 in there to actually get them to come out and crawl around and, and move around anyway. So she said, that makes sense. They will escape to cooler places because the temperature is inconsistent. Exactly. So the entrance is cooler or quarantine and starve them out. That is a long time. See, that's a TLDR. See, I should just have... I need to just tell Katie what to say, and she'll save my stuff, and then it'll be a lot more simple for people to understand. That's a good way to put it. Oh, my goodness. 
how is everybody doing? What y'all plans for this weekend? Y'all have a busy plan this week? I got on here early tonight. I've been streaming for an hour and 47 minutes, and it is only quarter after 10. How is that possible? Because I was here like 8.30. I was here early. Isn't that nice? I was here early. I try, if I can get my baby, Charlie's getting older now, so he can stay, he's hanging out with me. He's giving his two cents every now and then. You'll hear him in the background. Right, Charlie? He can't hear me now because he's playing Zelda. But Charlie's older, so he can kind of hang out during the live stream. Finley, he sleep. He's not even two years old yet, so he sleep. So if he gets to bed early, I can get on here early. Even though I tell everybody after 9 o'clock, if I can get here earlier, I will. I try to. I've got people that used to watch me from over in England, and they don't ever get to watch me anymore. I used to stream a lot earlier, like after 5, like around 6, 7 o'clock, and you'd have English people here too from England, and but it's like 5 hours later there. So they can't they can't come in here anymore. Please, please, I highly recommend to join the Discord server in the description. You know, I could copy that. Let's show you how to get to Discord. So. No. All right. Let's go to... Don't say... Well, I won't close it because I might do another one. So let's go to the live stream. All right. This is the live stream right now. You should subscribe if you're not already. It's a little button right here. Click subscribe. But... If you scroll down, let's see, I got my course, Crossfire, Amazon donations, schedule a time to talk to me, TikTok, uh, where is it? Discord, there it is. Click that, let's copy that, and then I'm going to post it in the chat for anybody who wants to chat with me. Now, if you're on the computer, you don't need Discord. You can actually chat using, like, so I'll show you, I'll show you how it works. If you click that link, Oh, that brought it up in a different window. Let's see. Let's click it here. Then you can continue to Discord. All right. Now, that's because I have the Discord app installed. But it does work in your browser, and you can chat in the browser. And you don't actually have to have Discord app. But I recommend having a Discord app to chat. So, that's what I recommend. It's free. It's free. It's basically like texting. So... Discord was invented by nerds who like to game and talk with their friends. And so, which I'm a nerd and I like to game and talk with my friends. So I had it already because I play World of Warcraft. I mean, this that's what this stuff right here is. That's that's the For the Horde and then For the Alliance right there, right right behind me. That's, that's, that's World of Warcraft. And so, uh, in fact, uh, 11 years ago, I told my wife I loved her through World of Warcraft because I'm a coward and I can't say it in person. But anyway, we've been married... We've been together for 11 years, right, Alicia? Yep. 11 years. But anyway, um, Discord is uh, a way to chat, and it has apps. So I have it on my phone, so I'll show you. It's Discord right here. It has Discord. There's the Bedbug channel right there. See? It says Bedbugs right there. Well, that's my ring. But yeah, I got Bedbug notification right there. See? Bedbugs. And so I can chat with people there. I've got a general chat. I've got a bed bug channel. I've got cockroaches, spiders, termites, memes, fleas, mice, and rats. Uh, a channel for YouTube members, if you're a member. Uh, business, and so for people that just like to talk about you know, their own pest control businesses and stuff. Ants. And then gamer talk, because I play video games. So it's a pretty cool place to kind of hang out and chat. And ask questions. And it's a pretty good community. I've got over 200 people in Discord, and we chat. There's, a, there's about maybe maybe 20 or 30 active members that are constantly always answering questions. So, um, What kind of questions should I ask my property's pest control company to make sure they're legit and will do the treatment properly? Look them up on your Department of Agriculture's website and make sure they're actually licensed. Um, everyone has to have a license if, 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 if you're applying pesticides. And so you should be able to look them up. Um, ask them if they're going to be using a heat treatment. Ask them if they're going to use Viking. Ask them if they're going to, what type of pesticides do they use? Tell them you're chemical sensitive. Lie to them. Oh, don't lie to them. 
Well, I'm saying to tell them you're chemical sensitive because most people can use that excuse. But um, tell them you just want to make sure that you want to look up what kind of chemicals they're going to use because you have to live there. You know, make up it something and, and ask them questions. Can I steam clean a mattress and spray Crossfire on it if the mattress is damp from the steam? I would let it dry. Let the mattress dry before you use Crossfire on it. Yeah, Kristen said the same thing. So, um, I was wondering if I was overthinking it and possibly exerting unnecessary time into the steaming task. Steaming is not a bad thing to do, but I don't do it. I can't remember. Did we steam our mattress? No, we did not. We did not. No. I... We had a steamer, but we didn't steam the mattress. Yeah, and we have a steamer. The thing is, is I was... We had a really good scenario. We did not have time to do anything but the bare necessities. And we had a brand new infestation. Look for the bare necessities. And so we didn't <laughs> even complete washing all the linens for like the first two weeks. You know, we sprayed every bed with Crossfire. We left the next day after spraying. And I think we put spare sheets in all the kids' beds and all of our beds. And we had all the sheets that we had on the beds prior to our treatment in the laundry downstairs for about a week and a half before we were able to get back with the new baby and wash everything out. And it only took one month of crossword. But we also do general pest control every month. And so it was a quick crossfire treatment the, as soon as we found out we had bed bugs. And then we went right back into our general pest control, monthly pest control. And so we haven't had any issues since then. Hey, Rory. Yeah. What would you recommend? I got a question for you. All right. Shoot. All right, so Rory is my son. He's been working with me for 10 years. He's 18. His first job was a termite job at 8 years old. All right? So, what is the best pesticide to use outside for general pest control? What is the best pesticide to use outside for general pest control? I would honestly say Demon. Demon? Demon Max. Really what about good. Onslaught? Onslaught's really good, too. It's so, what I use outside is Demon Max. Let's show you. I'll show you what I use. This is Demon Max. Okay? And then Onslaught. Either one or the other. Onslaught's really good, but it's really expensive. Um, so that's Onslaught Fast Cap. Just to give you an idea of pricing, a pint is $66.98. Alright, that's one of these bottles, this size, is $66.98. And then Demon Max for one pint is $34.56. So this is like half the price of Onslaught. Both of these are really good for an exterior treatment outside your home. Uh, Onslaught is really good if you've got problems with spiders. Um, Demon also kills spiders, but it's also good on lots of other bugs too. But Onslaught Fast Cap, I've been using for maybe two years now, and I've been really pleased. I think it's a really good chemical to use outside. Do not use either one of these chemicals. Don't use either one of them in the same tank you use Crossfire because they will counteract Crossfire. So do not have a special tank for Crossfire that you use only with Crossfire. No other chemical, just Crossfire. If I spray the perimeter of my house with Spectricide for house centipedes, then spray the mattress and perimeters with Crossfire, will the Spectricide make the Crossfire ineffective? If you spray it outside, it won't. But if you spray it inside, I mean... All right, so I would recommend Alpine WSG for indoors. 
and I would uh, on baseboards if you're if you're having more than one bug problem, not just bed bugs, spray your baseboards and your window and doors, uh, the cracks and crevices, with Alpine. Do your bed and your mattress and your sofa and all that stuff with Crossfire. So the Alpine will kill the centipedes. And the crossfire will kill the bed bugs, and that's what I recommend that you do. So, Alpine is good for palmetto bugs. Can't you just triple rinse the tank sprayer? I wouldn't. I would not use. I would not trip. Now, Alpine and crossfire you can triple rinse and interchange the two in the same tank because they're both non-repellents. But I absolutely would never use a non-repellent in a repellent tank. I would use a different tank. That's like saying, if I triple rinse my sprayer that I just had toxic pesticides in, as long as I triple rinse it, I can drink water out of it, right? Most people would feel like no because there's probably still some pesticide residue in there and if there's any pesticide residue in that tank it's not really water it's still pesticide even watered down and it can counteract crossfire so i use a separate tank for crossfire i've used the same tank now the tank i use for crossfire right now used to be my alpine bng and i switched and use it for crossfire now um but and I have another BNG I bought for Alpine. But my uh, my Demon and my Fast Cap and stuff like that, those are a different tank completely. I do not mix the two tanks together. You texted me pictures. Oh, I don't get pictures through that text message. They don't work. You can't text pictures. Photos don't work. I'm sorry. I can't get any pictures through that text message because that is a Skype me me uh, message. So they don't, I don't accept the text, 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 text pictures, but text messages, but not images. I'm sorry. But if you get on Discord, you can send me in images. I can get them there. How should I treat the room? where there's no bed and I don't spend any time. I slept there a couple nights on the floor and got bit. I don't know how to make sure the bed bugs come into contact with the chemicals since I won't be there sleeping. You need to be there sleeping. Um, houses that are vacant and you're not living in them and you want to ensure the bed bugs are dead, you need to be treating for at least six months straight. Uh, sometimes as long as nine months and then you'll kill your bed bugs if it's, if it's vacant. Once a month. So. Oh, and if you join Discord, um, in order to post images, I can make you a image. An image. So let's say you join my Discord channel and you want to post images to Discord. You need to ask permission because I need to change your stuff. Because I don't want somebody just coming on posting all kinds of crazy advertisements on my Discord. So I have images automatically disabled for all new members. So if you're a new member to Discord, you need to text me, which is Jason Greenacres. You'll know who I am. I'm right at the very top of the list. I'm the ad, one of the admins. It's just me and my wife. We're the only admins. And so text either either one of us, and I can change you change your member role and give you the role of member, and you'll be able to post images. So. Members are orange. And oranges are orange. What's orange? Is there more than one Alpine, Jason? That she Alpine WSG. There is more than one Alpine. Alpine WSG. Sorry. Alpine WSG is... Let's search for it here. I'll show you. Alpine. Let's just search Alpine, okay? You've got Alpine WSG right here, PT Alpine, 
Don't buy that. That's trash. But you got Alpine WSG. You've got, there's another aerosol PT Alpine. Uh, you've got Alpine Bait for cockroaches. You've got um, lots of different products. And you got Alpine D Dust. Where is that? Where is it? There it is. There it is. That's just amazing on some yellow jackets. Anyway, lots of Alpine products. But the Alpine that I'm talking about is, I just messed up. Hold on. Is Alpine WSG right there, which stands for Water Soluble Granule. There you go. So, let's see. Do you need to use Alpine Demon and something else for cockroaches? I just use Alpine for cockroaches. I use Alpine and I use Advion Bait, sometimes Vendetta. Vendetta is a really good bait, uh, Vendetta Plus, uh, which has Nygard, which is a growth regulator in it. You can mix growth regulators with Alpine, like mix Nygard in with your Alpine uh, WSG. That's really good. So, um, does it need to be mixed? Yes, it does need to be mixed. You mix it. Um, I've got videos on how to mix it on my channel. Let's see. Let me see if I can find that too. If you go back to my channel and you go to search, you should subscribe while you're here. There's a little button right there. And if you want to join, you can give me some money uh, and join, and then you'd have access to all my videos. Like, let me show you. I'll show you. I'll show you. Let me show you. If I can get it to work. Let me see if I can get it to work. If I go to YouTube. All right, and I post this up here like this. This is my YouTube. This is me logged in, all right? So you can go, and you can go to videos. This is my latest video. Now, if you'll notice, it says members only. So you have to be a member to view this video. And the title is Stop Doing This to Your Pet. This video will be available Tuesday. So I finished this video. I uploaded this video. Members get access to it as soon as I upload it. And I let them see it right away. Because they're... I, I got to give them something. You don't have to give me any money at all. All the videos will eventually be available. But if you want to get them early then you can do it that way. Kind of like Netflix. Yeah, we watch Netflix. Do we watch Netflix? Yeah. What's your favorite show to watch on Netflix, Charlie? Masha and the Bear. Masha and the Bear? Yeah. Is that your favorite show on Netflix? Yeah. I thought it was Coco Melon. No, I said. You don't like Coco Melon? I hate it. You hate Coco Melon? Yeah. But Coco Melon is awesome, and they sing good songs like Baby Shark. It's not for little kids named Charlie. Okay. When can I put clothes back into the drawers after spraying Crossfire? After it's dry. Make sure every surface is dry. Don't go putting your clothes back into a dresser if the dresser's still wet. Don't do that. Skeletor, Kenju. See, you also get uh, access if you're a member. You get access to emo, emo, emojis, special emojis. What's the bed bug one? Is it like that? Yeah, I did it. Ha ha ha. So you could post bed bugs and stuff, freak people out. What username should I put in? Anything. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want. It's your username. Uh, 
Oh, somebody is pending a friend invite. Aha! There you are, Katie. All right, you can send me a picture if you want. I'll take a look at it. Um, do you have to use it all? Do you have to use it all? I'm not sure. Can you move stuff from channel to channel in Discord? How do you do that? I didn't think you could do that. See, you used to be able to do that in TeamSpeak. I used to be able to move people around in TeamSpeak. I like TeamSpeak a lot more than Discord, but, you know, Discord's what everybody uses now. So, how often do I need to spray Alpine? Once every 30 to 60 days. It's a 60-day residue inside the house. So, what are these pictures I'm looking at, Katie? Let's see, these are construction pictures. What is this? I don't know what this is. I wonder if I can I share these pictures. Because then everybody else will see what I'm looking at. The neighboring room is the room with the bed bugs are found on the fabric headboard. Uh, I'm not sure how to approach spraying. Uh, you may not have any bed bugs in this room at all. I don't know why they would be in this room. There's nothing to attract them to this room. It's not even it's not even a finished room. This is a uh, unfinished room, and I mean it's a possibility that there might be some stragglers in this room, but more than likely not. If no one's actually living in this room or using this room, because so so what I'm seeing. Let me show you what I'm seeing. All right. This is what I'm seeing. So this is like an unfinished room here. Uh, it's got some tile board, it looks like. And then you got this one here. And you got this one here. And this is looks like a bathroom, trying to maybe redo a bathroom. There's a little shower nook with some electricity because electric plus water is a real fun time. But um, I actually look like somebody kicked in the panel on this tub. But... I don't think the bed bugs would be in this room specifically just because it's not really a very attractive room to them. And that's how I feel about it. I mean, you got all these different... It, it looks like an unfinished bathroom. And bathrooms aren't usually places bed bugs will retreat to. That doesn't mean there won't be one or two in there, but more than likely they won't be. I probably wouldn't treat, but maybe... Like down along this this spot here, like the floor, maybe in the wall. Like if you you see where these boards, I might treat here in the wall, along this crack right here, uh, and maybe on this crack here. Be careful, don't electrocute yourself. But um, you know it, what you can get to, and that's all I would do personally because I don't think anybody's living in this room, right? I don't think they're going to be in this room. They're not. Well, th one good thing about Crossfire, and, and another reason I recommend Crossfire is because the bed bugs don't run from it. There are chemicals that when you put it out, a bug's like, whoa, I got to get away, and they try to run away from it. Diatomaceous Earth is one of those. Uh, Demon, Tau Star, um, you know, several other pesticides that you could use will actually drive them crazy, and it'll force them into other rooms of the house. And Crossfire is not one of those chemicals. Alpine WSG is not one of those chemicals. And so you can use those and you don't have to worry about running them into other rooms. Hmm. 
A friend with many roommates is saying he had bed bugs and is free since six months. I'm scared his roommates might cause a reinfestation. I'm using his car every two weeks now. I'm scared I might carry them home. If he doesn't have bed bugs and he hasn't had bed bugs in six months, I wouldn't worry about it. You know, people get them. I had them. I had bed bugs. I had bed bugs. It's almost my two year anniversary of having bed bugs. It'll be my two year anniversary in three months of having bed bugs. You could ride in my car with me. I could take you around town. You're not going to get bed bugs from me because I don't have them anymore. Um, I haven't had them in nearly two years, so you're not going to get them from me. When I had bed bugs, you could have ridden with me in my car. You would not have gotten bed bugs from me because I didn't have bed bugs in my car. Not everyone has bed bugs in their car. Typically, people who have bed bugs in their car specifically probably have a job where they're picking them up at work most of the time. Or they have a case at home that is so severe that the bed bugs are on them all the time. And then they're actually on the person. They'll be in their pockets of their coat, underneath their collar and stuff. They'll be on their clothes because the coat rack that is in their room or the shower or their closet has got bed bugs crawling on their clothes and they take them, put them on, and take them with them. You know, it's not very likely that you are going to get bed bugs from someone's automobile unless that person has a really, really bad case of bed bugs. They they work for Uber. Ubers are bad for bed bugs. Cab drivers, basically. Um Public transit, school buses, uh, you know, these are the kind of places that get bed bugs living in the vehicles. Uh, metros, the subway, you know, these are places you can pick up bed bugs in moving vehicles. You know, the train maybe, but um, airplanes, the overhead compartment in an airplane where you take and you put your luggage in there. See, that's another thing. We we have a, a trip planned in in January. We're gonna fly. And so that's another reason I treat my luggage because you go on an airplane and you got your overhead compartment and you take your luggage and you put it up there with everybody else's luggage. You don't know if people got bed bugs on their stuff. Treat your luggage. So. And you don't have to worry about taking them with you. Preventative. Preventative pest control is the key. I treat my house. So when I got bed bugs, my wife makes me treat the house. I have my wife on a schedule with my databasing software. We are on the schedule for pest control every single month. That way we don't forget to do it. I do it every month. And then we were already doing pest control when we infested the house with bed bugs. I did one mild crossfire treatment. It wasn't heavy. It was mainly just the beds. It really, uh, there was a lot of places in my house that I did not treat. I missed, I either missed them or I just straight up didn't do it. And we still got rid of my bed bugs because I practice preventative pest control. We go through every month. We treat all the baseboards in the house with Alpine. We treat around my windows and doors with Alpine. We get ants and centipedes and stuff if we don't. So we just do all of that. We treat the outside with Demon or our Tau Star or sometimes we use Onslaught. Depends on what we've got problems with. And I don't really get bugs. Hardly ever. So, someone is asking about Onslaught. What do you think about your thoughts on Onslaught? It's good for spiders. And centipedes. I wouldn't use Onslaught for bed bugs. Um, they said that they have puppies in their yard, grubs, wasps, that sort of thing. Huh? They said uh, they have... What should I use in my yard where my puppies visit? They also have grubs and wasps. I wouldn't use Onslaught in the yard. I just use granules. Like a granulated pesticide over the yard. And, but with that, they have to keep the dogs off the lawn for a certain period. How yeah, well, you them? water the lawn. So what you do is you spread granules over the grass. You water the lawn. And then you uh, you don't put it on concrete or anything. You have to put it on soil. And then you water the lawn. And once it's dry, you can let your dogs out. It'll tell you on the bag. Just follow the label. The label, every chemical is different. And some granules have bifenthrin, some have deltamethrin, some have imidacloprid in them. And so depending on what the active ingredient in the granule is, it will tell you on the label how long to leave your dogs off of the lawn, and then you can let them back out. So. My nose is itchy. I'm not picking my nose. It's just itchy. 
I have to say that I'm very self-conscious about my face and what I do, and, but I itch my nose all the time because I have this mustache and uh, it likes to curl up a lot. In fact, so we went on vacation, my wife's family. I went on vacation with them uh, around the 4th of July and I got this one hair like right here and it was a really long hair. I mean, it was sticking out like that far. It was really long and it was a white hair because I'm... You see my my gray? Can y'all see that? I don't know if y'all can see that or not. Yeah, see? I got all this gray in here. I got all this gray. I got a lot over here. Man, that I, I is really, really white right there. But I also have stuff in my mustache. White and gray hair. And my wife's grandmother, she stayed with us while we were in uh, on vacation. And she kept looking at me, and she said, Jason, you need to let me pull that hair. Jason, just let me, li please, please let me do it. Just, just please, just let me pull that one, that one hair. It's really bothering me. I really want to get it out of there. And I looked at her, and I said, well, two are going to grow back in its place. And she said, no, well, let me pull it out. <laughs> and so I had to pull it out. And so I had to yank on that hair, and I didn't want to. I was just going to trim it and just leave it there. And she made me pull it out. Does the label matter? The label matters. The label always matters. It's like saying, well, I just bought a, um, a chest of drawers from Ikea. Do the directions really matter? Or can I just put it together how I think it goes? How many pieces do you think you'll have left over at the end? You need to follow the directions. The label of your pesticide is the direction on how it is to be used. If... I'll give you an example, all right? Let's talk about demon. Since we were talking about demon tonight, let's talk about demon. Let's see if I can find it. There we go. Boom. Demon. All right. And I'm using this very specifically because this you can poison yourself with demon. All right. Zoom in a little bit. It will tell you, um, see demon's also a termite pesticide. All right, so here you go. For bees, cockroaches, scorpions, spiders, stuff like that, it is one fluid ounce per one gallon of water. So you use one ounce in a gallon of water. If you use more, than this, one ounce in a gallon. Demon is a synthetic pyrethroid. And what synthetic pyrethroids do is they, they mess with the sodium channels in an insect. They mess with the sodium channels in a human. If you mix this too strong, you can actually cause yourself physical harm. Um, so you need to mix it exactly the way it tells you because if it gets on you you don't want it to hurt you so if you mix it too strong the the formula will be all wrong yeah you'll still kill your bugs but you could potentially harm yourself so it's very important to follow the label of any pesticide that you buy any pesticide that you buy you should always follow the label the reason the label is there is to give you the safe application method and the safe mixture so that you don't hurt your children, you don't hurt your pets, you don't hurt your neighbor's children or your neighbor's pets. Let's say you apply a chemical and you apply it too strong and it's really strong, well above label, and one of your neighbor's cats or dogs or even one of their children comes over to your house and is exposed to this chemical and gets very sick. Hopefully they don't die, but they get very, very sick and they end up going to the hospital. You are at fault if they can prove that you used a chemical that was listed above the label and you went above the label and decided to mix it yourself the way you want to mix it. You could go to jail or you could be fined or your insurance would have to pay, and you, you get in a lot of trouble. So you always, always 
follow the label. Because, uh, <laughs> like, <Lib> <laughs> that's a good joke. The bug will be extra dead, right? I mean, do you just, do you want it to be dead? Or do you want it to be really dead? I mean, dead is dead. It, it doesn't matter how dead it is. Dead is dead. If one ounce to a gallon is all you need to kill it dead, then that's all you need. You don't need more than that. Save your chemical. Extra isn't necessary. Save your pesticide. You're going to need it again later. What happens if you use all your chemical and then in a month you have spiders and you want to spray for them, but you used all your pesticide because you overmixed it. You used too much. Pesticides are expensive. <sighs> Can a bed bug lay eggs after going over crossfire? It's possible. If they laid eggs in an item that went outside of the home, will those eggs still possibly hatch? Yes. I work at a school. Schools are bad for bed bugs. Very common place for bed bugs. I agree with Vegan Tree Mama. That's good. Good advice. Good advice. You can put your shoes in a dryer if it's a front-end loader. But one thing we also do in our house is we leave the shoes at the door. The shoes don't come past the entryway. Oh, yeah, take your and shoes if off. if your shoes are at the entryway ready to go... They shouldn't have bed bugs on them. Bed bugs is practically non-existent, so long as they're not coming from the school. Yeah, my wife, we live like Japanese people. <laughs> And if I walk through my house with shoes on, um, she will actually cut off my feet. So with a hacksaw, with and all I get is a bullet to bite on. And it's pretty miserable because I've had to have my feet sewn back on at least 400 times because I can't remember to do anything I'm told to do. You have been better but, about wearing booties. But anyway, we have a boot tray right beside the the front door and my wife is constantly telling the kids put your shoes at the door put your shoes at the door don't you be walking across my house tracking dirt everywhere put your shoes at the door and if you leave your shoes at the front door and don't wear them through the house then you don't have to worry about bed bugs being on your shoes because they're at the front door but also, they're not like, in your bedroom leaving backpacks if you can leave the backpacks hanging yeah and we have actually had customers that have found bed bugs on the backpacks and then you can isolate oh they're coming from the Yeah, I had a customer one bus. time in Woodbridge that we did. Actually, it was Springfield, Virginia. And they found bed bugs on the doormat because the little girl came in on the school bus, dropped her backpack at the front door with her boots. She wasn't allowed to take it into the house. She had to go and get her books out and take them into the kitchen and do them. She had to leave her backpack at the front door. That way, the next day when they had to go to school... There wasn't any of this running around. Where's your backpack? Where's your backpack? Where'd you put it? It was at the front door. So they found bed bugs living under the front doormat. So like they fell off the, the backpack and immediately ran under the doormat to get safe, right? And uh, that's how they found out the little girl was bringing them from the school bus. And so they stopped putting the little girl on the school bus. Why is Sonic so hard? Why is Sonic so hard? Because you got to put more quarters in. When I was a little kid, Charlie, the games that I used to play were based on arcade games. And arcade games, you have to pay quarters to play. And the harder the game is, the more likely people will put a quarter in the machine and keep buying more turns to play. Because you had to pay for your lives. But this is better because on sweats, it's easy. Wait, I see I have it on one. I have to use public transport and the plane quite frequently. Now I'm scared I will carry home bed bugs one day. How likely is it to get them from there one day and what are preventative measures? Okay, so you can treat your, your backpacks, you can treat your, your luggage, and that's probably the best preventative measure. Use uh, Crossfire though. Not all pesticides are labeled to be used that way, but Crossfire is. Um, regular, yeah, and, and uh, yeah, 
Kristen says Artemis regular interior preventative treatment with Alpha and WSG due to high risk. Yep, that's what I would do too. Monthly pest control. Every month. Thoughts on bed bugs and stuffed animals? Throw the stuffed animals in the dryer. If you can't, throw them away. But if you can't wash your stuffed animal, throw it in the dryer, high heat, and kill the bed bugs. That's all you have to do. I got Crossfire can spray for my boy's room. I found bed bugs. How long does the spray last? Um, after it's applied, it lasts about 30 days. So. Well, I've been on here for two and a half hours. I think it's time to log off. What do you think, Alicia? Sounds good. That was a long live stream. That's probably the longest live stream in a while. Thank you, everybody, for showing up, hanging out, chatting with us, asking questions. The, everybody who called in, I really appreciate all the just, y'all have a great night. Y'all see you next week, you know, whatever. And uh, don't forget about Discord. Hang out in Discord and ask any questions that you need. We're always there to chat and answer your questions. So y'all have a great night, and we'll see you later. If I can figure out how to do this thing, let me see if I can figure it out. Let me close this window. And let me do over here, and let's play some music. I always like to play music when we get ready to log out. Mm -hmm.